Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, I'm so glad, trouble don't last, always, Matthew chapter 3, Verse 17. Then a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love, my son with whom I am well pleased. I want to talk about special treatment. Special treatment. Let us pray. Father, I decrease that the Holy Spirit might increase. Speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind. Father, your word is anointed. It shall not return to your void, but it shall accomplish everything that you send it out to do. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. It is in Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said amen, amen. and amen. Ushers, you may be seated. Thank you for your service. As soon as the baptism of Christ is finished, the Father speaks from heaven. God chose that exact moment to verbally associate himself with his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. In the words which the Father spoke that day, we are given an example of how a godly father deals with his children. In this passage, we can see an example that every parent needs to follow. Rusty Stevens of the Navigators tells a story about the day he was frantically pushing the lawnmower around the yard, trying to get finished before supper. His six-year-old son came up and, without even asking, grabbed the mower handle. He wanted to help. So Stevens quit pushing and the mower soon came to a stop. Laughing to himself at the boy's futile attempt to push it by himself, Stevens wanted to say, hey kid, get out of my way. But instead he offered, here son, I'll help you. Together they started pushing. The dad had to bend over and walk spread-legged to keep from bumping into his son. But the grass got cut. It was a whole lot less efficiently than before because the boy was helping. Suddenly it dawned on Stevens, this is the way my heavenly father allows me to help him build his kingdom. I pictured my heavenly father at work seeking, saving, and transforming the lost. And there I was with my weak hands helping God. God could do the work himself a lot more efficiently, but he allowed me to work with him. Lord have mercy. This text illustrates a parent's pleasure. When his or her child refuses to take shortcuts to greatness. Because sometimes, you know, people will try to give you special treatment. Allowing you to skip processes that everyone else has to endure. God showed pride in Jesus. Because Jesus did it the way it should be done and did not allow even his cousin John to give him special treatment. I'm here this morning talking against allowing anyone to give you special treatment when it is contrary to God's word. You ought not want folk to do you special favors outside of God's will and God's way. Now it's understandable, I believe, why 
John would offer Jesus special treatment. In our text, John the Baptist believes Jesus deserving of special treatment. After all, Jesus' birth was heralded by the angels. His mother received prophecy concerning his mission in life. His father had heard from God about this child. And Elizabeth, John's mother, had told John that Jesus is indeed the Messiah. If anybody deserved special treatment, certainly Jesus would be the one. Don't you agree? John is baptizing at the River Jordan, telling all who come to repent. Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees are there. The local poor villagers are there. And John is demanding that all come to be baptized in order to prepare for the arrival of the coming Messiah. John acknowledges that his baptism is insufficient for complete salvation, but preparatory for being baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire that only the Messiah could provide. Lord have mercy. And as John is speaking, Jesus comes walking to the Jordan River. Jesus joins the line of all the rest of those who are stepping up for baptism. John recognizes Jesus in the crowd and decides he needs to afford Jesus special treatment. John John says, I need you to baptize me. Not me baptize you, Lord. And Jesus was indeed more righteous than John. Jesus was and is the son of the living God, anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. And John, like many of us, felt that affording Jesus special treatment was the right thing to do. Lord have mercy. But Jesus disagreed. You do have a choice, you know. Jesus refused special treatment because Jesus knew that salvation had to be received by all in the same way. He could not be given special treatment and still demand others to be baptized with water and the Holy Spirit. How how often do we come in contact with people that we think are more righteous than we are and thus we feel insignificant in their presence? Sometimes we refuse to let them go through the same procedure as everyone else. At other times, we allow them to serve without training, without being commissioned, and without even doing what others were required to do. If they have a good reputation and are known for their wisdom and good deeds, we invite them into the best seats in the church and the best place at our banquet table. We find ourselves rendering them special treatment. And then there are those times when we think people are so good, we want to accept them into the church without requiring them to go through everything required in our discipline and in the word of God. We, we don't even ask if they know Jesus. All we know is that everybody says they are good people and we immediately give them more favor and honor than anyone else. But Jesus did not want any special treatment. Jesus understood that having a good reputation among men and being wise in men's eyes was not what God uses as approval for God's work. Jesus knew that not only did you need to be righteous, but you need to obey God's will for your life in order to receive God's blessings. Jesus was not interested in pleasing John. Jesus was interested in pleasing God, his father. Jesus wanted God, his father's affirmation. Jesus wanted God to be pleased with the way he did what he did. And he knew then that if that was going to occur, there could be no special treatment. 
Jesus is our example, you know. And he told John, he said, suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus told John, I, I realize you respect me and you know who I am, but right now you're preaching and teaching uh, people what God commands for them to be saved. You can't start making exceptions because you know who I am. Everybody doesn't know me. Therefore, you have to continue doing what God called you to do and do it the right way. Church, we can't go around God's commands to gain people's approval. We must submit and obey God and treat everybody the same way. Amen. After Jesus, after Jesus refused special treatment and went through the same baptism as everybody else, the Holy Spirit descended like a dove and anointed him, sat on him, and it was after Jesus followed God's process for acceptance into his kingdom that Jesus heard his father say, this is my beloved son that I love in whom I am well pleased. Now that's a father's affirmation of his son and that's what you and I ought to hear every Sunday morning when we leave church. Because we did what God required in God's way and we did not have anything that we wanted to be uh, exceptional for, we should be able to hear God say, you are my child. I'm pleased with you this morning. I'm glad about how you did what you did because you did it in accordance with my will and my word. Lord have mercy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All this special treatment is tearing churches apart. You don't know who's special, who deserves a special treatment. All you know is other folk doing stuff that you know they're not supposed to be doing because they have not gone through the process. And nobody says a mumbling word. They just hide it in their heart. Talk about it on the phone. Scandalize the church. But they won't come to the meeting. Where they can get stuff right. A whole lot of folk don't want to get stuff right. They really love drama. They really love to talk about what they're talking about and who they're talking about. They may not say nothing to your face, but you better believe they got speed dial. They're going to tell somebody. That so-and-so had special treatment. I know I'm right there. But, but, but what of a son who receives special treatment and is not affirmed by his father? A, a young man was to be sentenced to the penitentiary for committing forgery. The judge had known him from childhood, for he was well acquainted with his father. His father was a famous legal scholar and the author of an exhaustive study entitled The Law of Trust. The judge says, uh, do you remember your father? I remember him well, your honor, the boy said. Then trying to probe the boy's conscience, the judge said, as you are about to be sentenced and as you think of your wonderful dad, what do you remember most clearly about him? There was a pause. Then the judge received an answer he had not expected. Listen to what the boy said. I remember, sir, when I went to him for advice. He looked up at me from the book he was writing and said, run along, boy, I'm busy. When I went to him for companionship, he turned away, say, run along, son. This book must be finished. Your Honor, you remember him as a great lawyer. I remember him as a lost friend. The magistrate muttered to himself, alas, finished the book, but lost the boy. Beloved, when you get special treatment, you risk losing God's approval. God requires each of us 
to enter his kingdom the same way. Jesus said in John 3, 3, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Therefore, every man, woman, boy, and girl must be born again. There are no exceptions. There is no special treatment. Uh, again, in John 3, 5, Jesus said, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. There are no exceptions. In other words, if you're going to be saved, you have to be baptized by water. No exceptions. Water baptism, you see, serves as a sign to everybody that you have renounced your life of sin and accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. Yes, it tells all who witness and hear of your baptism that you've made a change in the direction of your life through faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. But in addition to being baptized in water, you also have to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit that only Jesus Christ can give. Right. It's this baptism, this Holy Spirit baptism that seals you and keeps you from eternal damnation. Uh -huh. The Holy Spirit is your deposit from God that establishes you as one of the disciples of his son Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit ensures that God's enemy, the devil, does not conquer you and defeat you. The Holy Spirit leads and guides you throughout the rest of your days. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? When you do it God's way, you get God's blessing. In, in the movie, Coach Carter, one of the star players on the basketball team didn't, didn't want to comply with the coach's rules. He, he wanted some special treatment because he was the star of the team. He, he wanted to be treated differently. He wanted some leeway in having to do all that everybody else was doing. And he, he threatened to quit the team. But once he discovered the coach wouldn't budge, he relented and half-heartedly complied. Yet his mama worked extra hard to get the coach fired. You know when folk hold you to a standard, some folk will work extra hard to get the person fired. They don't see the benefit in having everybody go through the same process as everybody else. And before you know it, there's a crew working against you, trying to get you removed. But when you please Jesus, please Jesus, you don't play favorites, and you don't give special treatment, God will take care of you. I know I'm right about that. This, 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 boy, this boy soon learned that, that procedures are in place for a reason, and that he couldn't get special treatment just because he was gifted. He, he learned teamwork, accountability, and friendship because the coach held his foot to the fire. He learned the value of respect and what it was to be a role model because the coach said, if you're going to play on this team, you're going to do exactly what everybody else has to do. Lord have mercy. Jesus has a team where he wants everybody playing by the same rules. I know I'm right about it. There can't be any special treatment when it comes to doing God's will in the earth. You, matter of fact, you ought to refuse to allow anyone to treat you like you're different. Give you shortcuts to working for the Lord. Child, you, you teach. You don't have to come to class. You, 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 child, you just come on during the choir. You don't have to audition. We don't need to know if you got a voice or not. You just... You just come on and the Bible said make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So we just going to add your noise 
and hope is joyful. Not up in here. Up in here, you got to go through Miss Brazel. You got to go through Miss Carolyn. You got to go through Odell. They want to know if you can make a joyful noise. The only reason I can get away with it because I'm standing up here. <laughs> yeah. But y'all ought to know if I'm bold enough to sing the way I sing, you ought to go through auditions because you might can't handle folk laughing at you like I can. Amen, lights. So therefore, everybody then understands the process. You don't just come up in here and get on the drums because you play drums somewhere. If you haven't rehearsed with the choir and been commissioned by the director, you don't just sit down and start messing with God's instrument because they let you do it down the street. Not up in here, up in here. There is no special treatment. Woo! I know I'm right there. You just can't do it your way. This is not Burger King. We are people of excellence, and we want excellent music. We want excellent instruction. We want everything we do for Jesus to be excellent. Long Ranger days been going. Been through. We are a team working together to glorify Jesus Christ. And all of us are in submission to God's will, God's word, and God's standards. You know, I'm glad now that Jesus didn't allow John to give him special treatment. Jesus had a tough message. He said, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in thereat, which says there's a whole lot of churches that let you do anything you want to do. I recommend that as you go right on over there. But there are some churches that have standards that says you have to go through certain procedures to get in place what you need in place. Because we've got to come to agreement that what it is you want to do, God wants everybody else to do. Does that make sense to you? We just can't do stuff the way we want to do it and think everybody else is going to be happy about it. Lord have mercy. No special treatment. I'm glad. Matter of fact, turn to your neighbor and say, I want to be treated like everybody else. I don't want no special treatment. I can't sing. Just say I can't sing. Amen, somebody. Amen. Somebody broke out singing last night. I know I'm right about it. Because they were preparing for this morning. They were rehearsing, driving in the car to make sure they hit the right note. Because they were concerned about excellence. Lord have mercy. Jesus turned down John's request for special treatment because Jesus understood the process that God wanted him to go through. Now we understand how important baptism is to enter in the kingdom of God. Because if Jesus did it, certainly we ought to do it. Don't, don't let folks trick you into thinking you're good enough because of your reputation, education, financial status, or pedigree. In God's kingdom, we, we, we have to enter as little children. We have to enter with humility, recognizing that our lives are nothing when compared with the holiness of the God with whom we have to do. All of us cannot even, ooh, we don't measure up a morsel to the holiness of God. So how would we expect somebody to give us special treatment when all of us stood in need of God's grace and God's mercy? How would we come in God's house demanding our way? All right. Good news. In God's kingdom, Jesus says, don't take any shortcuts. He didn't take any. We shouldn't take any. When he came to be crucified, he didn't accept any special treatment. They walked him through the streets of Jerusalem just like they did the other two criminals. 
they whipped him and made a spectacle of him just like they did to the other two criminals. They nailed him to the cross just like they did the other criminals. They mocked him and scandalized his name just like they did the other criminals. They offered him vinegar to drink just like they did the other two criminals. But they did not know what they did not know was that God had already declared this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. It makes a difference when you please God and you're suffering for righteousness sake. It makes a difference when you submit yourself to the ordinances of the church and of our Lord Jesus Christ. It makes a difference when the church is on one accord and understands how to get things done and everybody's not doing their own thing. It makes a difference to the ministry of Jesus Christ in the earth. And oh, if we all could just submit ourselves to the will of God in that way. What a time. What a time. Oh, have mercy. You know everything was the same until the sun refused to shine. Everything was the same until the moon dripped in blood. Everything was the same until the dead got up from the grave. Everything was the same until the Roman centurion cried out, Truly, this must be the Son of God. Everything was the same on day one in the grave. Everything was the same on day two in the grave. But early Sunday morning, because he didn't accept special treatment, because he walked out God's plan for his life early Sunday morning, while the other two were still in the grave, he got up. I say he got up with all power in his hand. You can get up with shortcuts, but you will fall down so fast you won't even know you are up. People will put you up somewhere where you ought not to be because of your pedigree. But you ought to tell them, no, I'm going to do it just like everybody else because I serve a God who has no favorites. He wants me to do it just like everybody else. So don't put me in a position where I'm at odds with Jesus. You know, that's a dangerous place to be. When you're not in league with Jesus Christ, you're in a dangerous position. Early Sunday morning, Jesus got up with all power in his hand. I say he got up ruling everything. And you ought to be able to be victorious. When you don't take special treatment and you're going up the rough side of the mountain and you find yourself on the top of the mountain, your head won't be too high. Your mind won't be too hard. Because you'll remember how far the Lord brought you from. You'll remember that there was some days and every day was Sunday. You'll remember you had to pray your way through one night. You'll remember folk walked away because you wouldn't accept their special favors. You'll remember you got fired instead of fired because you had some integrity. But God, when you get to the mountain, 